Our special guest today is Mr. Vincent Price, world-famed actor and also art connoisseur. He's in Great Falls to give a lecture and also he's going to be judging an art show at our C.M. Russell Museum. Mr. Price, I'm sure that the majority of people in this country, when they hear your name, instantly think of horror films because this seems to be what you're most closely identified with. So let's first talk a little bit about horror films. and. I, I would assume that of all that you did, that you most are fond of, of Edgar Allan Poe, because certainly he was the greatest horror story writer of all, wasn't yes, he? Yes, so, no, I mean, he's a marvelous writer. And uh, actually, you know, I've done about 102 films, and only about 25 of them have been horror films. Right. But they've been very successful, and it's extraordinary that nobody had done all of the Poe films before. Right. So um, I've not done all of them by a long shot, but uh, I'm working at it. Of all the films you did, did you might did you say you enjoyed those the most? No, I wouldn't think so. Uh, actually, uh, you know, I mean, you you enjoy a film depending on the people who are in it and the right. people who direct it and the people who make it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did enjoy some of them very much. Most of them were directed by a very bright young fellow named Roger Corman, and I liked working with him enormously. Did you ever scare yourself when you looked at some of the rushes? Uh... I only scare myself about seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's pretty frightening. Right. And I think it's your voice uh, that was particularly meaningful in those horror film interpretations, uh, the inflections that you put. Could you say good morning to everyone in, in your typical I Vincent do. There uh, is no Price. typical one. I just say good Edgar. morning, you see. I see. It frightens people. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from the horror uh, side of your life that is so famous, a, a part that's becoming more and more uh, famous is your role as an art critic. Um, and in connection with that, let's talk a little bit about your beautiful new book that has just been published, well, thank you, The Vincent Price Treasury of American Art. Of all your love of art, would you say that American art is your favorite? Yes, I, actually I was an art historian before I was an actor and I studied uh, different areas of European art. But uh, ever since I was a little kid, and particularly being from St. Louis, which mm -hmm. is a great art city, I uh, had an enormous interest in uh, American art, and particularly American Indian art, or anything to do with the Indians. And so your famous Charlie Russell is a great favorite of mine. I was going to ask you yeah. about that, and so let's just open the book. It's going to be difficult to show a double spread photograph, but this is one. Would you tell us the name of this well, particular one? Well, it's the, uh, it's uh, Lewis and Clark, and um, actually I, I think it's not as one of his greatest paintings, but it certainly is one of his greatest historical paintings mm -hmm. and also gave me a chance to talk about the whole exploration of the West. Right. You mentioned Indian art particularly, um, and in connection with that, didn't you do something at the Museum of the Plains, the Plains Museum at Browning? Yes. Um, actually, I was 15 years on the Indian Arts and Crafts Board in the Department of the Interior. And uh, one of our jobs, about uh, eight years ago, we took over the management of the three major Indian museums in the country. And they did a marvelous thing at the University of Montana about um, the whole history of the Plains Indians. And so I did the narration for it, and they use it up there with their sort of Sony Lumiere. Right. And also, Mr. Price has some magnificent uh, oh. jewelry on his arm and his fingers. Uh, where did you get this beautiful Well, fortunately, turquoise? suddenly now, uh, after my yakking about it and a lot of people <laughs> talking about it, it's very popular. <laughs> and uh, this is Navajo, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. from the Navajo Guild in Cameron, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And then this is a very old one that I found one right. time. Isn't there quite a trend now for the younger Indians to try to learn the craft oh, yes. older to to maintain these, to continue the Yes, crafts. we started a school, as a matter of fact, down in uh, Santa Fe, which is called the Institute of American Indian Art. And we have about 90 tribes represented there of young people who want to re-identify with their culture. And uh, I have given a, a poetry award every year there for about 10 years. And Doubleday put out a book called The Whispering Wind on American Indian Poetry, and it's absolutely wonderful. It's uh, some of the best poetry being produced in America today. Right. And American art is gaining popularity all over the world, oh, yes. is it not? Oh, yes. Yes, fortunately. Particularly Indian art, fortunately. Yeah. Do you have any Western art in your own personal collection of art? I have a great deal of uh, American Indian art, but I don't really have Western art because I've never been able to afford it. <laughs> Hope someday you might own a Charlie Russell? I want to own a Charlie Russell ashtray. <laughs> That's what I want. You do. Yes. In addition to Mr. Price's interest in art, he also is a gourmet cook, we understand, and with his wife, he's written a book called Treasury of Great 
great recipes. Do you two actually do a, a lot of uh, cooking and experimenting in your own kitchen at We home? do all our own cooking. You when do. I'm home, I do it all. Men are much better cooks than women, you know. Though my wife would hit me right over the head if she heard me say that. Some of the greatest cooks in the world, of course, are men. Uh, actually, all the great chefs are men because it's a profession, you know. Do you have one dish that's your specialty? or No. You just like them all? Yep. And one type of seasoning or no. uh, just like it just all? Just like it all. <laughs> Anywhere it comes from, I like it. All right. Your voice is, is absolutely magnificent. Have you done special training through the years to develop it, or has it come quite naturally? No, actually, you know, Missouri, where I'm from, uh, has a kind of non-act.